weird. Hello, people of the interwebs. Today, I'm gonna get back to work on restoring my Graham's 1994 Ford Ranger 4x4. If you're new and you wanna get caught up on that project, up above my head is not a link to the Ranger, but to why you should never give an inebriated ferret to a nursing home as a gift. <laughs> what? Today, my goal is to start working on the drivetrain installation of the Ranger, which is gonna be a massive project. That's the worst part I have to do next. One, two, three. Holy shit! That got really heavy. Oh geez. This one is flywheel. Before I stick a new clutch and flywheel on here though, I'm gonna replace my rear main seal because Obviously, if you're doing this, you should replace the rear main seal. Even though mine wasn't leaking, still gonna do it. But this is really easy to screw up because you don't wanna hit either the crank or the outer wall when you're trying to extract the seal. So you gotta know what the hell you're doing and pay attention to what you're doing or else you'll damage it. There you go, and I'm through. So now that I got into the seal, the metal part of the seal, without hitting either the crank or the outer wall. I'm gonna screw a screw in here. So much easier doing this on much larger diesel engines. It's tough on something this small. Make sure that screw is in straight. Okay, so that's in the seal pretty good. I had to start the drill bit slightly upwards, just enough to bite into the inner metal core of the seal. And once it bit into it, then I could straighten my drill bit so it went directly in without hitting the outside wall or the crank, because you don't want to mar up either one of those surfaces. To do this successfully and correctly, you just have to have good eye-hand coordination and patience. It's starting to pull, yeah, it's starting to pull it out. Hell yeah. Haha! <laughs> See that? It's out. That's what's up right there. Easy peasy. That thing was hard. You can see right here on the back side, the screw poked through in between the two lips. That's what you want to happen. You don't want it to go into either one of those because then you're gonna scratch up either the crank or the wall. Just in case there's any little bits of crud that fell inside this area when I drilled the hole, that's why I didn't push the drill bit all the way through. As soon as it broke through the other side, I stopped. This rear main seal is made out of PTFE, and this is one of the few things in life that is designed to be inserted into the backside dry. No loop. It comes with this little plastic ring that's designed to slip over the shaft to make insertion easier. Oh yeah, it slides over the shaft really easy. Look at that. It's almost in. Ah. So this Millennium Falcon looking mother has to go on next. Oh, I might need to do some touch ups on it. It's actually in pretty damn good shape. Millennium Falcon repaired. It's ready to go back on the back half of the engine. I grab a tech data so I can look up the torque specs for flywheel. That's hilarious. It actually shows in the service manual to insert machine screws. It literally says sheet metal screws into their rear main seal to remove it. <laughs> So you go this way. That's a pretty tight fit. That's what he said. Oh, thing is heavy. <sighs> Just gonna stick one in for now to hold it. These things have a two-stage torque procedure. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of red high temp breadlock on here. It's like hot sauce for robots. Stage one, 12 to 15 Newton meters. Okay. Step two, 68 to 74 Newtons. So 71 sounds good. Okay, now hopefully this thing doesn't start to turn over, which I think it's going to. That's really gonna suck. We'll see. Damn, all right. Uh, I don't really like this idea because that could slip or I could scratch something up after putting all this effort to make it look nice, but I think it'll work. I think. Damn, it slipped off. Let's see if this works. Damn it! Solution! I don't like this method because there's a good chance I could strip something. There we go. Ha, ah, this is gonna work. One more. Test this one one more time. Okay. Look at that, success. Didn't break a tooth, didn't scratch paint, didn't break a nail. These little orange nipple covers are still there. A large portion of the work I have to do to get this thing ready is hard to film and it's not very glamorous, I guess you could say, for camera but I gotta do the work regardless, and it's gonna be extremely time consuming. Everything you see here has to get cleaned or renewed or refinished in some way. Hello, it's the next day. I'm about ready to take the Bronco to go get an alignment now since I got the new suspension done. I haven't had a chance to enjoy this thing yet because it needed the alignment. So after today, I'll be able to. So got quite a bit of progress done last night, cleaning some stuff up. And uh, as far as the transmission goes, since that thing badly needs to get soda blasted and then cleaned. Oh, this sand person. <laughs> <laughs> The hood costs $35 and I hired Reed for an hour to soda blast the rest of the transmission for a hundred bucks. Money well spent. <laughs> okay, well he does that. Clutch. All right, all right, all right. It's actually really pretty. It's got like this rainbow effect finish on the little brackets inside the clutch disc. Anyway, this is just a OEM replacement Luke clutch. This shop towel smells like a cheap steakhouse. It's weird. I don't know what a cheap steakhouse is either. I guess like one that's in a mall. A shop towel probably wasn't the best to use on this left little tiny paper hairs everywhere. Lube. This is a really weird feeling lube. Put the new pilot bearing in here. Belly button power. A little bit of Loctite. Hardware, just a dab. So gotta make sure that this thing stays centered or else putting the transmission on will be a royal pain in the ass. I gotta tighten it. 
getting these things 21 to 32 newton meters, I think. It's a pretty large range. I'm gonna do it right in the middle at like 26 newton meters. Yeah, that's right in the middle of the range, 26. There you go, all torqued. I'm gonna go check on Reed now and see how the transmission is doing. Should be almost done with that. It's done. It's uh, it's better than it was, but in, by no means is this perfect. It, uh, I gotta come up with a different solution. I gave him a tip because that's a really crappy job to have to do out there. And uh, it saved me some time just paying him to knock out the rest of it. The issue I'm running into is a vapor hooding machine is like three to six grand depending on what one you get. A uh, dry ice blasting machine, ten to forty thousand dollars for a machine, and even just renting either of those options costs more than just buying a rebuilt transmission. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing with soda blasting. I gotta pull the bed back off of this thing. This finally just came in the mail. A new fuel pump. It's a Delphi one. They don't make the motorcraft ones anymore, so. Here you go. The sending unit is on this pump and it was not working. I drove cross country not knowing how much gas was in the tank, so I just stopped every 100 miles. Wow. Actually not as bad looking as I thought. This guy right here, this little Rio stat. Ah, that's why it wasn't working. It was stuck under the bag. This is what I call a stupid problem to have because I'm pretty sure this was replaced at one point in time. I don't think this is the original fuel pump and the technician probably just put this thing down in there and this got stuck underneath the coalescer bag. <laughs> and then it was like, oh man, the fuel gauge doesn't work. Must be something else. I guess they just kind of ham fisted it. I don't know if that's a real word, ham fist. Anyway, here's my new one. If you look at the two of them next to each other, this is a Delphi, the one I just bought, and this is the Carter that was in there. If you look at the float, it's pointed back at the little coalescer bag. That's why I got stuck under there. Whereas the Delphi unit, it points out away from it. Also, just it looks like it's constructed better, like engineered better. It's not all bent and crooked looking. Carefuling. Float goes in first. I think it went this way. Yep. You think they could have made the threads just a hair finer? Like just a little bit so this thing wasn't so ignorant to try to put on? Jeez, this thing goes on tight. While I'm at it, this clamp is trash. I need to replace that. Look how bomb this salad looks. Yum. This video is a little bit more talking and a little less work than usual. And honestly, I had to kind of chill and dial it back a bit because I've been working on this channel for like four plus years straight now, seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day. I don't take days off. And I start having weird lapses in my like mental state throughout the day. I'd be doing something and then a couple seconds would go by and I'd completely forget where I was or what I was doing. And it was really weird. And I think I'm just to the point of overworking myself now where I gotta chill. So next video you see, something I need to go to the junkyard and try to find is all these holes right here in the fender. Well, there's little plastic clips with two studs and the nuts go on them that hold these flares on. And the ones for the rear, I don't have because they were all corroded. If you're watching this and some miracle you have a, access to a junkyard or an old parts ranger that has the 4x4 flares on it and it has those little clipper doodles from the flares that are in good condition, please let me know because I desperately need a good set of those and I only want to use OEM hardware. I'm going to reattack this thing in the next video too. I'm not going to paint it. I know a lot of people suggest just spraying it with some silver paint. No. 
I want it just the raw aluminium finish because it is an area that gets hit with rocks a lot. And uh, I think some etching mag wheel cleaner or some aluminum brightener might be able to get some of this galvanic corrosion off. Everything that's left that's rusty, I'll either zinc or powder coat. And uh, I'll have an update on the engine bay for you also in the next video because Fred's been working on that pretty hard and the entire engine bay he stripped with paint stripper so it's now down to bare metal to make sure there's zero rust left so that's going to turn out really nice uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another bye